My name is Jim Thomas and welcome to the Fitness Management Update. Our topic today is how to convert websites, simply commit to doing the follow-up. You know, the, the numbers that we know are, are accurate are that it takes roughly eight attempts before you will contact the average website. That also means is you're going to con uh, connect with some of these folks immediately, which means other folks is going to take 16 attempts to get in touch with them. So first and foremost, there has to be an absolute commitment. This cannot be, I'm going to try to, well, hey, I've already sent them an email. You have to literally commit to it. Number two is you're going to have to get creative with your follow-up. It just can't be the same thing. Hey, I'm touching base. Hey, I'm touching base. Hey, I'm following up. You know, look at different ways to get in touch with these folks, you know, which can be your emails, which can be text messages, which can be videos, which can be articles. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, that you're serving your client. You know, you're tagging them on Twitter. You're tagging them on Facebook. Uh, you know, all of these things, you're, you're interacting with them. Uh, if you see that they're posting on social media, you know, you're commenting there. So come up with a creative plan to effectively follow up because you never, you know, want to stop following up with this lead. Unless they tell you they don't want to hear from you again, you want to hang in there with it. But you must be creative. It cannot simply be, I'm trying to sell you something, I'm trying to sell you something. The best approach is going to be, is really, I'm trying to serve you and here's what we're trying to do. Uh, number three you know, understand that speed is power. You know, some of these statistics, you know, are, are pretty incredible. But, uh, you know, one of them is that, you know, if you follow up on a web, a web lead within five minutes, you're nine times more likely to convert them. So understand that speed is power. And then lastly, you know, you have to be good to your word. You know, if you say you're going to do something, do it. Okay. Don't be late. Don't almost do it. Don't forget to do it. Uh, make sure you get it done. Now, you know, of course, we work with a lot of groups, a lot of salespeople, a lot of clubs, and here's some of the things that we see why leads don't get converted. Uh, number one is salespeople don't know what to say, and so you want to get yourself a script. You want to get yourself a strategy on what you're going to say and what you're going to do and how you're going to approach this. It just can't simply be buy my stuff. Number two you know, we find that salespeople, they, 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 they lack some confidence sometimes and, and they feel like they're, they're coming across as desperate, you know, when they follow up numerous times. And the thing you want to remember is this, is when you're selling anybody, you're selling anything, you know, you want to stay focused on, you know, what that desired outcome is. You know, what this is about, it's more about how you feel about the customer than it is how they feel about you. And what I mean by that is, is you know you've got a product, you've got a service that's going to help people look better, it's going to help them feel better, uh, may indeed help them live longer. You know, stay focused on that, on how you can serve these folks. And this will help, we think, uh, you know, alleviate any of that appearance that you may feel of, uh, of becoming desperate, you know, to get that person in. And then number three, you know, we find that salespeople, they often say this, well, I don't want to pressure customers. OK, and again, this is called, comes under the same heading here a little bit is what we find to be true is that there's two kinds of pressure, because whenever you ask for something, there's a pressure there. And really what it comes down to, I think, is the difference between low pressure and then what would be perceived as high pressure. Because I think when when salespeople say, well, I don't want to pressure somebody, you know, what they're saying is I don't want to high pressure somebody. Whereas there always will be a pressure there when you're asking, when you're asking for an appointment, you're asking for a sale, you know, whatever, the, whatever that case might be. And the thing you want to remember on a high pressure sale, that's when you're selling for your reasons. Uh, I need the sale. I need the deal. I want to close somebody. Okay. It's going to come across, but a low pressure sale is when you're selling for the customer's reasons. You want to help them lose that weight because they're getting ready to get married and they want to look you know, great for their big day. Or you want to help them lose that weight because they want to get off medication, things of this nature. Okay, So if you can focus on these things and become more effective on converting website leads, you know, for most clubs out there, you know, we're not doing this properly. We're not staying on it. If you'll focus on this, this can have a dramatic impact on your business and it's not going to cost you any more than what you're spending now and probably is not going to really evolve much more effort than you're giving now. You just need to be more effective at it. My name is Jim Thomas and this has been the Fitness Management Update.